I'm back. Well, what have we got today? Well, you remember we had a, a bridge, uh, a bridge tremolo uh, that I showed you earlier on. I think it was in uh, section four of the series, uh, made by ABM. Well, when I came to fit that bridge, you know, to just check it had fit okay in the uh, the body that you can just see over there. Uh, well, here's a picture on screen now. And uh, yeah, there were one or two funnies going on with it because you couldn't actually get the tremolo to fit. Which is a bit weird. Uh, I'd never had that before, really, on a, uh, a two-point uh, tremolo that's supposed to just actually be completely compatible with a two-point fender body. Yeah, you know, two-point mount. Uh, it's a bit strange, yeah. Well, we'll come back to the reasons, the whys and the wherefores a little bit later on in this video. But uh, in the end, I decided that, uh, yeah, I wasn't going to hack about an half an inch hole bigger in the body. Didn't sound like a plan at all. Uh, and I decided to send it back, which is a whole another story, which you're going to get to hear about in another video separate from this series, uh, about uh, how difficult it is to send something back uh, into Europe and I guess even if you're in America it'll be just as difficult for you as it was for me well is for me at the moment I'll keep you up to date on that one so what did I do well I went shopping for another another bridge to a tremolo tremolo some people say I think you American guys anyway I went and had a good look around and uh, I couldn't really find much out there that was something different and something new and then I, I came across this this one. This is a I think you pronounce it Babix. Well, if you don't, that's what I'm going to call it. And this is what they call uh, Babix Full Contact Hardware. Now this bridge, we're going to have a look close. But this bridge, there's one or two important things about it. Now let's think bridges for a moment, or tremolos, or tremolos, or call them what you will. Let's think of the Fender one. There's a picture of one on the screen there now. Have a look at the saddles, because what you find with the saddles on virtually every type of tremolo is they've got these two little screws, and you screw them in, and they, they fit on the bottom plate, so to speak, a bit like, a bit like that. Well, that's all okay and well and good, but the actual surface area that you've got for the... Uh, the sound to travel down through the tremolo is actually the size of each one of those two tiny pins and that's not very big at all. You think about that. So what Babix did was he had a little think about it and he incorporated a pile of innovation into this bridge. Now some people say that oh, the Babix bridge its terrible, it's this, it's that, it's the other. But I always take things as I find them and uh, yeah, the design of it really is different and that's why uh, I ended up choosing this one because I haven't got one of these on any of my guitars, any of the ones that I've assembled or built or constructed or thrown together or call me what you will. This can be the answer. So what I want to do is let's go down close and take a real good look at this. You might be surprised and you know what? It was actually cheaper than the ABM one from Toman in Germany. Well, this is how it comes. All neatly packaged and you get a load of information on the back, which we'll probably look at in a little while. So let me just pull this out so we can get a, a better look at it. OK, well, this is what you get for your money. You get a few instructions from over there for now. You get the inserts for the body with two of the fulcrum pins, hardened pins, pretty par for the course. You got a little adjuster, you know, an Allen key. Well, we'll see about that later. You get two screws that will fit into the claw that's in there. You can see it there. And you get actually four springs. Huh. Oh well. You get the tremolo arm, very nice. I don't know how nice it is if you want to fit one of the plastic things on the end of there. 
And I also noticed that it screws in, which some people like, some people don't like, but it's been good enough for Fender for a few years, so it's probably good enough for me. Let's move that out of the way. And lastly, we get the tremolo itself. Let's go down a bit closer and take a take a look at that, uh, where we can get sort of up close and personal and uh, learn the features that are on it. There's one or two very interesting features that you might not have seen before if you've never actually looked at one of these uh, full contact hardware bridges before from Babix. Then, well, you will have never seen anything quite like it. Well, as you're going to find out, there's some good points and there's some slightly less good points on this bridge or tremolo or tremolo, depending where you come from. As you can see, let's start at the bad bit. Well, I say bad bit. It isn't that bad, actually. You can see that this weight, this uh, steel weight, looks like steel to me, is chamfered off at the bottom. And the reason it's chamfered off at the bottom is so that you've got a bit more pull up on you well push down should I say not pull up on the the tremolo itself when it's in position yeah that uh, that's important maybe you want a lot of tremolo down maybe you don't but that will help you but of course it loses a little bit of the weight of the uh, the unit itself although the rest of it weighs a ton I notice in here uh, one two three four You've got five spring holes, but they only provide four springs. <laughs> Fancy that. It must be a four spring dirt technic. No, I better go there. <laughs> well, that silly little comment takes me on to the next part. This one here, if you can see in there, I don't know whether you can see that. You probably can't. But it says P dot W Taiwan. So this one's made in Taiwan. None of your China muck here. This is Taiwanese. And very proud to be Taiwanese and I, I'm, I'm happy with Taiwanese product I've dealt with them for a lot of years off and on okay you've got the top bit here that looks like uh, it's made of brass it may be but it may be steel it's difficult to actually know because I don't think they really tell you yeah okay well there it is if you take a look at one of these let's choose the end one as it's easier and you can see that the, the string will fit in there, it'll come out the top, and it'll go through that groove there and go forward up the neck. You can see it. Now inside there, if you look really careful, yeah, you can just about see it from there. There is like a, a steel piece, it looks like steel, or, well yeah, it is steel, right there. And that sits as like a circular thing here. See that? So let's consider turning it back this way. And at the back, you've got two Allen keys. Now the Allen keys are really to take this fulcrum, I'll call it a fulcrum, because as you twizzle it round on the Allen keys, this fulcrum will rotate like this, but as it rotates, it lifts up the uh, saddle or the, the part of the saddle where the string goes over. That, that's the bit to remember. Yeah, that shiny bit in there. So if you think about it, the saddle itself, this bit here, stays flush with the base all the time. And the whole of that saddle, you can see the size of the saddle, it's quite a big unit. The whole of that saddle is sitting absolutely flush on that bottom plate. But this fulcrum allows the string to be adjusted or higher or lower, depending on uh, what you want, uh, you know, by way of action of the guitar. Now I think that's a very innovative uh, thing. In fact, it's extremely innovative. I've never seen it on anything else. Have you? Put down in the comments what you think if you've uh, seen this on 100 bridges or tremolos. I don't think you have. Now looking at the top, we can see, well, there's the saddle. 
the one we're talking about and you can see there's a there's a screw for moving this backwards and forwards to get the intonation of your guitar correct and if we turn it over and have a look in the back sure enough there are the screws that we can adjust up or down well in or out to take this uh, saddle and position it well something like they are now you normally have three there and three there now what some people don't like uh, is this uh, this name stuck on the front it's sort of etched on you're not going to get it off anytime soon I suppose you could get a bit of gold tape and stick it over it or something like that if that's what your thing is well for me it doesn't make any difference but I bought it not for the name but I bought it because of this innovation here now if you think about this uh, this innovation makes it so that the string and the transmission of sound through the bridge uh, is as of one if you follow me so I think of it as almost stuck down and the reason I say that it's almost stuck down is you can see there's a little allen key in the end here and what you normally get on bridges is these things move sideways now if you're really careful you might be able to see the side play it's very 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 small however if you take this and you tighten it up it will make these totally rigid in the bridge so there is no play there is no room for the maneuver by themselves and they're also held flush on that base plate uh, which to me that makes massive sense doesn't it to you so there it is let's take a look at that arm I haven't actually tried it in there yet well it seems like any of the other sort of regular run-of-the-mill arms yeah it sort of tightens itself up as you can see and it gets tighter the further you push it yeah that looks pretty good so let me just take that back out is there any adjustment well no I don't think there is any any means of being able to uh, make that go tighter I can't, at least I can't see any in the uh, in the mount for the uh, for the arm. But I'm not too worried about that. The fender ones have got away with dangling down for well for years, haven't they? Just coming back to those screws at the back for just a second. One of these screws actually locks in the uh, fulcrum, and the other one adjusts it. That's what the actual things are on the fulcrum section of the uh, saddle and there is one more snippet of information these uh, saddles the way that they sit on the uh, base plate they offer actually 50 times more surface contact than on regular saddles that you've probably got on your guitar right now if you put using a fender that is I also want to point out one more thing if you take a quick look on the back of this you'll see that these saddles used to have a sort of screw at the front there if you can see it to lock down the intonation they don't seem to have that anymore uh, as you can see here that's it that's what you get no more no less so there's nothing to hold it down other than the string itself but it will be on that surface uh, you know pressed on that surface by the string itself won't it uh, and I'm pretty sure that uh, that will be a pretty good job. Now, as a very last point on the uh, on the Babix, one of the things I did find, which is like a, an installation tip, and I, I really do want to tell you this because if you just leave it until you fitted everything, you're going to be unfitting everything. You can see on here we looked at earlier that these screws along the back adjust the intonation or position of the. Uh, the saddle when you come to adjust these these screws are very tight in the saddle and what I found with them is you've got to screw them in and then they go slack 
almost like they're not so they don't have the thread all the way through them enough or something weird there's something weird going on with that but if you tighten them up first you'll tighten them and then they go slack as you're tightening them and then as you're slacking them off back out if you get me uh, you'll find that they'll be perfect and that that's just one of the little tips that i'd give you uh if you're going to fit one of these anytime soon well here we are with the body and uh, when i fitted the abm bridge into this uh slot uh, there was no way that it was going to actually go down at all into the uh, into the guitar itself, which was a real a real pain, and I was wondering how to get around that. So what's the score with this? Well, I did have to take off about a sixteenth of an inch all the way along that edge there, but I can assure you that for the ABM bridge. It would have been probably a quarter of an inch I would have had to take off and I'm, I wasn't keen on doing that. So why I've had to do that I don't really know because these particular bridges are supposed to be two point fulcrum bridges that just fit in there and just work. Of course the problem comes when you fit the fulcrums and you find you can't fit, get the bridge in and, 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 and what I found with this was that along that back edge there just a sixteenth of an inch uh, too narrow well you wouldn't take it off the front it was it was at the back where it was touching so I took it off the back very carefully with uh, a Dremel tool actually uh, and uh, you can just about see a couple of points where I was marking up at the time but of course it doesn't matter because they'll be well hidden under the bridge as well uh, the back edge now there's still on if I feel under the back of there there's still oh at least a good eighth of an inch of wood that overhangs the hole Whereas, which it does on a fender uh, but I, I, as to why I've had to do that honestly there is no reason it, it won't be the body the bodies are made all the time the same and I have never had a situation with a warmth body where this wasn't big enough for a two point fulcrum. I, I could put your money on it, I could take a fender tremolo and it would fit right in, exactly right. I also wanted to cover the aspect of these two fulcrum points. Uh, if you look at these, some people have said uh, with the barracks, uh, when you fit these in there, that, that there's huge amounts of play. Well, there is a little bit of play. If you look careful there, you can just about see it, maybe. Even on the Fender ones, it's actually very similar. And while some people said, oh, yeah, that's a no-no for me, you know, I, I wouldn't want my uh, bridge, uh, my tremolo, moving around like this on there. Well, the fact is, there's got to be a little bit of play in that, otherwise you won't get the screw in and out. And I think that's about, well, that's about as good as you're going to see. It's about as good as a Fender. Well, I do hope you like the uh, the Babix tremolo, and uh, you'll see it being fitted presently uh, later in the series. But uh, that's it for the for the tremolo that's actually going to be fitted because it does actually fit. There's no sending it back and anything like that. Uh, well, what's coming up next? Well, you can see there's the neck and the body's just up behind it. Well, you can see just about in the corner over there. And the next thing is we're going to be spraying those two. Oh, I can't wait. It has been a bit cold. That's one of the reasons I put off spraying those. And it could actually snow this weekend, they say up to sort of six inches and if it does do that I'll probably put that off another week it's got to be the right conditions and I'm having to do that in the garage which isn't the warmest place in the world you know it's separate uh, but we'll see if I get that done I get that done and if I don't I'm sure there'll be something else I'll put on here I think we're actually on video seven in the series on this one so you can Put a big X through the ABN one, uh, although if you are interested in those uh, particular tremolos, 
it was a, a good introduction to looking at one, but it highlights the problems that you might have, which is always a good thing in this series and, you know, the stuff that I do. So number seven is the Babics. Number eight will be the refinishing of the bodies. Uh, number nine will be highly likely uh, the polishing. And uh, then we'll get to finish the guitar. So that's it for now. Anything relating to any of this stuff that I think is any use will be down in the text below, which is important. So you can go and have a look at all the other stuff. And uh, yeah, that's it. Don't forget to go to www.tennymackenzie.com. That's down in there too, in the links. Uh, well, there's a few reviews and stuff like that. And uh, until next time, get out of here.